Hello YouTube, Sinflake Mango, and today I've got you three GBA games. Now one of these games is a bootleg, a fake, whatever you want to call it, um, and can you tell which one it is? Uh, it's actually this one. Um, I bought it knowing that it would be a bootleg, but to make the purely to make this video, so I've not personally been conned out of it, but I wanted to show you guys how to tell, for a GBA game anyway, um, a real between a real and a bootleg copy. Um, so we're gonna get rid of Spyro and we're gonna just use two Zelda, fake Zelda, uh, Minish Cap and a genuine Link to the Past Four Swords um, cartridge. So this primarily will be cartridge um, tips, but there is some tips that will apply for all media. So first things first is the visual inspection. Now, I don't know whether you can see on the camera, you can actually. So, can you see an indentation here of a number? That's the factory number. Now, a genuine cartridge will have an indentation. This one is actually really easy to see, but um, Spyro, for example, I don't even think you'll be able to see it, but you, it's there, you just can't see it as well. Um, that is quite a nice one to work on because that's a plain background, so you can see it quite vividly, even on the camera. It's 15, it says. Um, this one should have that, but obviously it doesn't because, yeah. Uh, the sticker quality is the next thing to look at. Now on this one, it's actually stuck down, which is a start. Uh, when this one arrived, the sticker was half peeled off, so I literally had to stick it back down myself. Um, so there's the sticker quality, there's the uh, number on the front. You've got a lot of Game Boy Advance ones, this is a very common one. If you look at the writing, where's the camera there, so where it says Game Boy Advanced, and if you compare the two, the genuine one is a lot less prominent. You can, side by side, you'll probably see, see the difference. So, the genuine one you can't actually see too far from here, but this one really stands out, they've really gone to town to make you think it looks genuine. Now again, I put Spyro next to it as well, uh, bring it into view. Um, you can see the difference there. That one, this is much thicker, and th this is uh, obviously lighter but more um, thinner. So next thing I'm going to do is open a couple up and show you what they're like inside, and then we will talk about the insides. Okay. Okay. So I've removed the screws from the back of both of these cartridges. Uh, the first thing I noticed with these ones is um, a genuine GBA cartridge. Um, you undo the screw and then it will slide down and then lift off and then you get to that. This one, however, doesn't do that. This one doesn't slide, it just snaps off. So there's there's no actual... This is the backs of them. You can see there's a slight difference. There's uh, actual tabs that slot. This one's just got a little pop tabs. Um, now let's look at the boards, so Alright now the first thing that is massively noticeable to me when I looked at these is the um, copyright Nintendo 2001 Nintendo then the this is the AGB E0320 is the um, games code um, and okay they've got the game code on this one but what they have done is they've not spelt Nintendo correctly. So instead of saying Nintendo, it says uh, Niniendo. They haven't put the T, they haven't done the dot, and they haven't done the t across the T. So they've tried, but failed. Where the original, where they do actually spell it correctly, surprisingly. Um, secondly, most. This isn't all, but most genuine cartridges, um, the individual components are actually labelled. So we've got, this is the EEPROM, which is what holds your saves. This is the mask ROM, which is obviously what holds the game. Um, and I believe Spyro has the same sort of principle. Um, whereas this one doesn't have any of that, it just has circuits and no labelling of any, what anything is. Uh, another thing is this big, the big black blob. That's another giveaway. Um, pretty much all Nintendo cart, genuine Nintendo cartridges will not have this blob. Some older NES ones do, but majority of them, that's a bit of a giveaway. 
Um, but they were very crafty with this Nintendo copyright logo thing. Because uh, if you didn't have the correct tools, you need a um, tri ring screwdriver to get into these. <coughs> and if you don't have one, the only other way you can check um, is to literally look down. You won't be able to see on camera, but to look down in the cartridge slot. Um, and you can see where it says it says Nintendo and looks genuine. Now this one, when it's covered by partially covered by the um, when it's partially covered by the cover, it does look like it says Nintendo. Um, so that's very crafty. They've made sure the bottom half of the word looks genuine and then skimped on the top. So that's one thing that I noted with that. Um, but yeah, they act. In terms of playing, though, I'll pop it back together now and just show you. Um, they actually play absolutely fine, um, so you you wouldn't know the difference. I was really surprised at how good quality of a copy this was. Um, let me just put these back together. Right, okay, so we've got a GBA old style one, a modded one I've made. Um, the next thing I want to show you before I power up is the thing that just uh, known as the doorstop effect. Um, which is another way you can tell. Now, looking at it this way on, you can see that it is pretty much flush. There is no real... Uh, let me just pop a bit of light over the top. There is no actual you know, lump or bump. It's quite flush. And we'll pop a fake one in. And then you will see that there is a gap. There's a gap here, but more importantly, it's noticeable is that it actually looks like it's got a bit of a doorstep to it, hence the name. So you've got, it goes along and then goes up about a millimetre before it, so that is full, as far as you can push it in. Um, there is, obviously, there we go, you can see slightly better now. Um, but yeah, it does actually play. So let's boot it up and I'll show you guys what we get. It's surprisingly very, very good quality. Now this Game Boy is modded, so it does make everything look good. But even on a non-modded one, it looks very good. But yeah, we've got the file I started. So you can play just as you would with a genuine copy. Um, I expected it to be full of spelling mistakes. Um, you know, and things like that, but it's not got... So far, at least, it's playing exactly as it should, um, which has very surprised me, uh, massively surprised me. I think the, a genuine copy of that game is about, if you're lucky, you can get it for about 15 to 20 pounds in good condition. This one cost me two pounds 30 delivered. Now that's crazy. Um, I'm not at all saying get bootleg games, but the there's no different in quality, but apart from the fact that I know it's not a genuine, so I, obviously I want to buy it. I want a genuine because I want it from my collection. But how easy you can get conned out of it. Um, somebody could have bought that off one of these Chinese sites where I got it from and sold it to you for full price, you not knowing the difference, paid 15 20 pounds, and then you're stuck with a bootleg which you can't resell on. Um, and it's not a genuine part of a collection because it's obviously a bootleg. So hopefully that will help you guys out with that. If you need any more advice, please drop me a comment and I will try my best to help you. Um, Pokemon games are a whole different kettle of fish. Um, they also have saved batteries in them, which is another way you can tell the, um, the legitimacy of them. But I would do a separate video on Pokemon games. Um, I'm waiting for a bootleg Pokemon one to come through so I can show you the, compar um, the comparison between a true and a bootleg. But yeah, hopefully that was helpful and I'll see you in the next video.